from News 7 KWWL. We've got you covered. This is KWWL News at 10. Good evening, everyone. I'm Abby Turpin. And I'm Ron Steele. Thank you so much for joining us here live tonight at 10 o'clock. We're going to begin with Decision 2020 political coverage. The June 2nd primary is upon us, and the last state of request an absentee ballot is coming up soon. It's May 22nd. That's right, Abby. In fact, this year, Paul Pate, the Iowa Secretary of State, is encouraging all Iowans to cast their ballots for the primary from the comforts of their home. And, of course, that means quite a different process from what we know as in-person voting. KWW reporter Ashley Neighbor tonight taking a behind-the-scenes look with two Eastern Iowa County auditors. Step by step, we're going to give you an inside look at the life of an absentee ballot from when the request forms enters the mail to when your ballot arrives at the county services building. This year, more Iowans than ever are opting for the absentee ballot process, setting records in counties like Lynn and Johnson, where voter participation is in the tens of thousands. We're going to set a record level here in Johnson County for a primary. We have about 37,000 ballots that we have mailed out to date which is um, probably 60% more uh, voters than we normally have participate in a, in a primary. Auditors Joel Miller in Lynn and Travis Wiper in Johnson said they've gotten more inquiries about the process and concerns about the security. You know, I hear people say, I don't trust it. Um, I can assure you that it's a very um, trustworthy operation. Uh, we now have intelligent barcodes that go on ballots, so we track them. It's just, you know, a lot of little things people don't see that, you know, when they say, oh, absentee voting's full of fraud, well, that's just a total myth. So let's take a look at the process. It may vary slightly by county, but we got a peek at the seven-step process in Lynn. It all starts here. <laughs> where absentee request forms are received. Part of the form indicates what ballot you get, Republican or Democrat. If you're an independent, you have to pick a party. You don't get some, you know, in-between ballot. And the other thing is then we have different ballot styles based on where you live. Step two, this secure storage room is where absentee request forms are digitized, ensuring that voters only get one ballot. Labels are then attached to the envelopes. So the labels will tell us with the barcode on it what ballot they need. Then we have another group will fold it, stuff it in that secrecy envelope, seal it, then it goes into a tray, tray goes over to our postage meter. The group, a bipartisan team who sends out the mail, a requirement by law. Once a voter fills out the ballot and sends it back, it comes here to be received and verified. Rebecca Stonowinski, Deputy Commissioner of Elections, says it's critical voters remember to sign. We have a bipartisan team, a Democrat and a Republican citizen, that take this envelope and they separate the ballot so it's not kept together. We keep the signature forever, ensuring no one knows how you voted. So if anyone was worried that maybe someone voted on their behalf, you could check the signature? We could check the signature, but the ballot is always kept separate. Once verified, they're scanned into a database. Barcodes ensure the ballot is tracked at every step and that no voter can submit more than one ballot. We're scanning in the envelope to make sure that we have a record of what date it's received. Next, those ballots will go into our secure cage back here. Only three people have access to that room and the ballots remain there until the citizen board of Democrats and Republicans comes to count them on election day. We can verify um, just about every aspect of this. We can verify when the request came in. We can verify when the ballot went out. We can verify when the ballot got put back into the mail. We can verify that the man, that we received the ballot. The ballot scanners are tested with sample ballots for accuracy and then secured. With a, with a seal that has a number and a code on it to be sure that on election day nothing's been tampered with. Where that bipartisan team will ensure the physical ballots match up to the database and are finally counted. It seems like a lot more steps for us, but you have to remember we're required to have three people at every precinct on election day. So right now trying to find enough people to work those sites. It, you know, in and of itself is a huge task. With most poll workers being older Iowans, the auditors hope voters take advantage to vote from home and as a practice for the November general election. And I want the people to trust us, trust that this process that we have, uh, not only in Lynn County, but in the surrounding counties and the entire state, is a uh, verifiable 
uh, trusting process. Each day, county auditor offices go through obituaries and remove the ballots of those who have died, a requirement by law. The barcode process ensures that someone cannot cast an absentee ballot and then show up at the polls on election days and cast another ballot. Reporting in Lynn County, Ashley Neighbor, News 7, KWWL. Ashley, thank you so much out of Lynn and Johnson counties. Now, Blackhawk County also reporting record-breaking interest in absentee voting at this point already, as we had two weeks now from the primary election day. By the way, make sure you check out your location because in-person voting locations will be reduced this year across the state, of course, because of COVID-19.